What's your most controversial movie take? Nicolas Cage is the truest actor. He puts his entire soul into every role, no matter how dumb or ridiculous the script. Horror is not jump scare and gore. It is one of the oldest genres, if not the oldest, that relies on fear, the unknown, and strong emotion. There's nothing wrong with liking those two. But horror has completely lost all meaning within the last 15 years. It's not horror. It's filmed haunted houses. Edit. I'm not saying some good ones haven't come out. But the market is literally saturated with bad ones. Out of 15 years. Y'all have repeated the exact same ones to me. So. Already. That is saying something. You replace Cameron Diaz with any other living actor for her role in Gangs of New York. And it wins the Academy Award for Best Picture. I love Wild Wild West. Just found out everybody who was involved hates it. Will Smith says it's the worst movie he ever made, and it has a Rotten Tomatoes score of 17%. Close bracket. So I guess that back quote s a controversial opinion. The thing that makes Stephen King's books so great is also what makes the movies bad. A lot of the story is in the heads of the characters. And that just can't be successfully translated to the screen. Galaxy Quest is one of the best Star Trek movies. The scene in Shrek 2 where Shrek and co. storm the castle to rescue Princess Fiona from Charming, while the fairy godmother sings holding out for a hero is one of the finest action scenes ever put to film. Toy Story Cold Gone Down in History is one of the best, if not best, trilogies of all time they had a perfect beginning, middle and ending. If only they didn't do the fourth, which while I may have cried at the end of, it felt unnecessary. Treasure Planet is one of the best Disney movies and horribly underrated. Janice in Mean Girls is a bully. More people need to recognize that. Just because someone says back quote I really like that movie it doesn't mean they think it's a cinematic masterpiece. Some people just like watching movies. And will pretty much have a good time watching a movie. Even if the movie was back quote bad. Toy Story 3 is a retelling of the Jewish experience in Europe from the pogroms through the Holocaust to the 1948 founding of Israel. Waterworld is Kevin Costner's most underrated movie. People take fiction too seriously. A movie being bad isn't the end of the world. Your childhood isn't ruined because of a bad sequel slash reboot. I think Demi Moore's character, Molly, should have died at the end of Ghost so they could be together. The movie Avatar would have been much better if it were half as long. If the movie ended right after the tree was blown up by humans and the aliens left devastated, everyone would walk out of the theater sad and reflecting on how we destroy the environment. But no, they needed another 80 minutes of action. I love the first love action Scooby Doo movie. The twist at the end is what makes it for me. I won't say it in case anyone skipped it because of bad reviews. I genuinely like the Frozen soundtrack. My daughter went through a stage where that was her movie. We watched it daily. The songs are catchy. Every time I hear them, I end up smiling. I'm old enough to have seen The English Patient when it came out and everybody was going on and on about how incredible it was. Absolutely despise that movie. I have no interest in seeing Free Guy. All my friends say it was the best movie of the year but all the trailers looked so boring to me. Also, I find Ryan Reynolds plays basically the same character in every film I've seen him in. And this looks no different. If you watched Greatest Showman and came away thinking Barnum was a good guy, you are the reason why people like him get away with being terrible people. Pretty in Pink is awful. Rich asshole who won't listen to the girl he's dating vs the nice guy friend who thinks he's owed affection. Characters can be terrible and annoying. But the whole movie just has me cringing and hurting for the protagonist the whole time. In all reality, 
The rest of the movie was pretty good. I just didn't like two of the central characters. No big deal. Dwayne The Rock Johnson is by far the most overpaid and overrated actor in history. His best role was playing Moy in Manor. And that's because he was animated. Tremors is a top 10 all-time sci-fi horror monster movie. Hell. I'd say Tremors is a better movie than Alien. The first Smurf movie is genuinely entertaining. Sure the rap was unnecessary and no one asked for it, but Neil Patrick Harris nailed the main character. A Quiet Place is a contrived, illogical mess of a movie. I love The Black Cauldron, and yes, I read the books too. Mask of the Phantasm is the best Batman movie. Jack and Rose both couldn't have fit on the door. Back to the Future Part 3 is my favorite BTTF. Without the opening scene, Up is just an AVG movie. High quality gore doesn't make a shitty movie any better. Looking at you. Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake. Ben Affleck's Batman wasn't bad. Death to Smoochie is a decent flick. Tarantino's films are basically just pastiche. Somehow he managed to convince audiences that finding references is cool. And not just pointing out how derivative his work is. I'm just here to argue with anyone who insults LOTR. Ratatouille is one of the best animation movies ever made. Hollywood the Duck was a fun movie. Here's a two fair that will garner many down votes. I'd watch Mal Rats over Dogma. Avengers, Infinity War is better than Endgame. I love Joe vs the Volcano. Can't understand why it's so panned. Great movie. Inspired me to take risks and live my life. Great symbolism. Great cast. Super campy. Love it. Oh these threads are always a bit of a circle jerk. Because real controversial opinions are downvoted to oblivion and self-congratulatory ones are upvoted. Here is my genuine controversial movie take. Inception was kinda a B-rate popcorn flick. I didn't think the characters weren't particularly memorable. The music was just a bullhorn and a tuba, and I thought as far as psychological thrillers go, the plot wasn't even as original as many people give it credit for. I haven't seen Avatar, and never will, just because it bothers people so much for some reason that I don't care about it at all. Napoleon Dynamite is one of the best comedies ever made. I like Batman Begins more than The Dark Knight. The Empire Strikes Back plus Revenge of the Sith and everything else. I know TESB is already popular, but liking Rot S more than New Hope and Return of the GD make people want to cut me in half and set me on fire. I like the Brendan Fraser Mummy movies. Those movies are stupid fun. The original Conan the Barbarian with Arnold Schwarzenegger is an art film. Mario Brothers movie rocks. Jackie Brown is the best Tarantino film. Daredevil with Ben Affleck was actually really good. The director's cut was horrible, though. The hangover or hangovers are shit, and not at all funny. Cringe comedy in movies, i.e. Will Ferrell movies, will immediately ruin it and make it a chore to sit through. All bad movies suffer because of bad writing and companies turning diversity and inclusion into commodities that are written and handled by people who don't have actual knowledge of it. Good movies with good writing integrate differences in ethnic background, culture, nationality, gender, gender identity and sexuality in ways that are entertaining and respectful without being pandering or heavy-handed. It just adds to a character. Their growth and struggles are universal regardless in most respects. 
including their differences, and making it a focal point without actual thought isn't for any group to be empowered, but is only to boost sales and exploit what studios think is in vogue. If this sounds very logical slash normal I'm glad. I've had to have too many conversations of people literally going. Backslash minority is ruining movies. Why do they have to put them into the movie? It made it awful. Pointing out that. Hey. If you change the character to Matt Damon playing a heterosexual man who was assigned male at birth and presents himself that way, the movie still wouldn't be good doesn't get through to people. A bad movie is bad because of writing and greed. Not because they decided to cast someone of a different race, or because they made a character LGBTQA+. I walked out of Thor, The Dark World thinking it was great. The HP books and movies are both equally good. They tell the same story in different, but equally good ways. The movie Coco is better than Encanto. I'm willing to go to war for this. Black Panther is a good Marvel movie, but it's not so great that critics and Oscars bend over to give it every praise. Speed Racer is underrated, and by far the best adaptation from Anim to live action. Transformers 2007 was a fun romp and doesn't deserve the hate it gets. Who Framed Roger Rabbit is not only a fun movie, but a cinematic masterpiece as well as a cultural milestone, the likes of which will never be seen again. I think all of Adam Sandler's movies can be funny, or have their funny moments, if you just lean into the poo poo pee pee jokes, and don't take it so seriously. Like, not everything has to be Manchester by the sea. Edit to add, I've also enjoyed most of the Disney live action remakes, and think they're fine enough interpretations of the original source material. Just because Sharknado is crazy weird doesn't mean it's not good. I thoroughly enjoy those movies. Fuck trailers. Spoils 90% of the movie. It's gone from a teaser on what you might see in the film to hey here's the plot and a few surprises that you would have been very excited to see in theaters. But now you essentially don't have to. I like the movie Battleship and want a sequel to it. Spider-Man No Way Home was a decent movie that I would watch if I didn't have to. Terminator is a way better film than the bigger budget T2. T2 is full of fantastic effects and amazing action as well as a lot of pandering with a wiseacre kid in the form of Elaine becoming a guard dog slash superhero. Terminator was brutal and stood atop a tragic impossible love story at its center. Ghostbusters is a poorly paced mess and has no relatable, likable characters. 2001, A Space Odyssey is obviously impressive in terms of cinematography, but boring as hell to watch. Gal Gadot is horrible as Wonder Woman. Iron Man 2 was a good movie. Mickey Rourke was a strong villain and it was a fun story. I have a lot of controversial Encanto takes. Should have given Mirabel the gift of emotional healing at the end. I envision her having a room that had lots of different areas, so there's appeal for lots of different people, and she gives people the opportunity to open up, be vulnerable, and push through the thing that's blocking them, like she did for her sisters and Bruno. When her gift is in action, I imagine people's hearts glowing, because she's sharing the gift of the candle that now lives inside her. A. I'd be willing to consider this not being a magical gift like the others have. Given that it's evident in the movies that she does have this gift in a way. But that brings me to my next point. The family needs to reconsider how rude it is to say that people like Mirabel, their spouses, and the other townspeople have no gifts. Just because you don't have a superpower doesn't mean you aren't gifted. That could have been a nice conclusion as they're rebuilding Cassiter. Hearing the townspeople say we have no gifts sounded like they've been beaten down to second class citizens and it's sad. I think Bruno should have actually left Cassiter instead of living in the walls. The way he stayed reminded me of an abusive relationship. 
There could have been an interesting element that he left because gifts don't extend beyond the safety of the town and he wanted to be rid of his prophecies. But Mirabel can bring her gift with her because she carries the power of the candle. And because she's with Bruno. He's able to reignite his gift even though they're outside the Encanto. She uses her gift of emotional healing to help him push through the vision to see the butterfly, etc. I think all the stuff about Bruno's room and finding the pieces was unnecessary. It was long. And I don't think the prophecy was that shocking. Given that she already was the only one who could see and feel the cracks the day Antonio got his gift. Bruno's return should have involved a lot more fanfare and apologies. Justice for Bruno. Feels like this family is still just sweeping things under the rug. The townspeople should have apologized to Louisa for making her do unnecessary stuff like herding their donkeys. Fixing a building quickly? Yes. Her gift was necessary. Keeping donkeys in line. Get a fence or a border collie. She can still be a valuable service without breaking her spirit doing all these menial tasks. Justice for Louisa. Edit. A word. I don't like Star Wars. Turning red is just a knockoff of Teen Wolf. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video don't forget to drop a like. If you would like to see more content like this in the future. Subscribe and turn on notifications to be notified about future videos. Now check out one of these interesting videos.